What is going on YouTube? Brendan for Market Makers, your Wednesday update. This is your home for Wyckoff and Advanced Fibonacci TA, and it is a mixed bag to report today. So the NASDAQ, Bitcoin, SPX, Russell were all exiting their Wyckoff trading range, and they all met resistance, specifically the NASDAQ and specifically Bitcoin, hit their 200 and 233 long-term moving averages. The NASDAQ was able to hold its higher low, where as Bitcoin was not able to do so. So we need to talk about the environment we're trading in and what the next steps are in this environment because this is a highly volatile environment, guys. So let's go ahead and start off with the NASDAQ really quickly. So the NASDAQ here on the four hour time frame. I've been walking you guys through this in the different markets over the last several videos, but you have your Wyckoff base, your selling climax candle, your Wyckoff ceiling, your automatic reaction. And as you can see, we got our propulsion out of the Wyckoff trading range. A little bit more euphoric rise than Bitcoin had. We had to get up higher to test this 200 and 233. Kissed it, failed, came back up, tested it again, kissed it, failed. But we held our support and we are above our Wyckoff accumulation range. This is still bullish. We're still on our GAN channel. We're still holding above Wyckoff. Bitcoin did fall back down. Now, it's more important that the NASDAQ held this than it is for Bitcoin. Bitcoin because remember Bitcoin is viewed as risk okay this is the larger broader market for tech specifically as well if this holds this range and is able to flip the 200 and 233 Bitcoin will go along for the ride to what degree it may vary but that's why we have fib targets okay so this is very important this is very crucial that the Nasdaq did this now guys I've been talking about this the last I don't know multiple videos now but if anything you need to have the 200 and 233 thrown on every single asset that you're trading in crypto or in equities, especially the indexes in bear markets. Remember how powerful these are on the four hour time frame. This is always going to be the first thing you have to test and flip. And as you can see, whether you're trading the NASDAQ or Bitcoin, you get movements based off of these long term moving averages. OK, very, very important to realize that. So this is still bullish. The NASDAQ did make a double top here, but it was able to hold the neckline. And right now it is still accumulating. We'll see what happens here. But again, it's all going to boil down to this 200, 233 coming up to retest that if we can get that momentum to shift and be more bullish again. And as you can see on Bitcoin, you get the exact opposite picture. You broke out of your trading range. You did kiss the 200 just like with the NASDAQ, but you kissed it one time and you rolled down. Now, I know a lot of you were able, judging by the YouTube comments, to enter this trade at the base as suggested in the previous videos and capture this right up. I wanna stress, guys, actively manage your trades in these volatile markets, okay? You can do that via take profits when you hit targets, or you can do that via tightening your stop loss as price rises. I use the tightening stop loss method personally because I like to capture as much profit as possible, and that also protects you when you do get a downturn. As we discussed, this was an option in the last couple of videos. If you did not hold and make that cut pattern, you would re-enter your trading range. That is what we did. Now, in the bullish side, you still do have a higher low structure and we can pull that fib over just like we've been doing here from that swing low up to roughly the top of that wick and you can see we are holding above the 618 again this structure doesn't concern me as much as the equities markets because this is going to follow bitcoin will follow these markets now guys in our room we have multiple admins posting trades and one of them did post a trade for a short right up here and this is a nice treat for him guys if you want to trade with us you're going to get trades like what i gave you here on youtube these longs you're going to get shorts you're going to get pattern trades you're going to get trades based on GAN concepts, Elliott Wave Theory. I have a group of professional traders in the room. It's a fantastic place to be. Check the room out. That join button is right underneath the video. Love to see you guys in the room. And we're trading on BitGet, our longtime sponsor. Really do appreciate your guys' support. You can show your support. We do have a thank you button. And I would advise you, keep your money. If you're going to spend your money, join the room so you get something out of it, right? Mutual benefit. And definitely would appreciate if you do trade crypto, 
crypto, trade on BitGet. It is a fantastic platform. Try it out. It costs you nothing. We have a private tournament coming up for everybody that's available with people on our link only. So that link is in the video description, okay? And let's talk about what the next steps are in this market. Guys, we're going to look at Ethereum too. A lot of you were requesting Ethereum, but in any market, in any altcoin, throw these moving averages on, okay? Because that's the first thing I'm going to do when I look at Ethereum is throw on the 200, 233, and throw on some fibs and put it in Wyckoff and see exactly where we are. So we know what we, we know what the next steps are going to be here. Just be aware that you did make the first M in a double top. This is how double tops form in these markets, okay? You hit key resistance. You did not hold your base. You roll down. When you get another move back up, it can be at a lower level like that because you have your two. 233 and your 200 descending you could impact it if you fail again this is how you get double tops and a neckline and descend further okay now i anticipate as long as the nasdaq is holding that key level above the wyckoff trading range i want to see another attempt at breakout but that breakout has to flip these two long-term moving averages if it does not the nasdaq will roll over and in that case bitcoin may hang on for a little bit but that bias will definitely be to the downside okay and let's go ahead and look at our indicators and then we'll flip to another time frame and then we'll look at Ethereum. So guys, one thing that one thing to keep in mind as well volatility as a trader, okay? You see it here on this trade. You got the nice wave up and it fell apart. The markets, just keep in mind the equities markets, beginning of May, end of May, they ended up within 3% of where they opened for the indexes, okay? So all that volatility in the month of May, think about all the downfall, the bear market rallies, the indexes ended up within 3% of where they opened in May. Some were higher, some were lower, but all within that 3% range. So this is a trader's paradise if you actively manage your trades, but this is also why so many people sit out in the sidelines because you need to actively manage your trades. I don't want to hear anybody in the comments tell me that they kept their stop loss somewhere down here and then they missed out on all this profit, okay? You got to to understand how to actively manage your trade by taking profits or tightening your stop loss along the way, okay? That's just something you need to understand as a trader if you want to trade these markets. Let's look at the indicators really quickly, four hour time frame. So we did not get very much uh, contraction here before this move to the downside, which is why this move was limited, okay? When you get tight contraction in your volatility, that's when you have the ability to have this real big expansion in the channel. We were overbought in RSX, the so RSX will wave down, come maybe test the base and then start waving back up. I want to see that bullish momentum. We are getting a nice demand wick here on this candle. We did have a breakout volume bar in the four hour time frame, high relative volume, big selling bar, but we're holding this base. We're holding this higher low. So watch for that double top to potentially form. We need to impact the 200, 233, and we need to hold the higher low. Okay. So the next time we come up, you need to see something like this. You hit the 200, you get rejected it potentially and you hold okay you don't want to just roll back over and make a shape because then you can have a bias to fall apart let's go ahead and look at this on the eight hour time frame not a lot different as you can see we're still in this GAN channel um, you still have the dissension of the 200 233 your 144 I have on here as well when and if we do start moving back up with the NASDAQ, I anticipate us trading in this channel. And again, you're going to impact the 0.5 at 32,991. The 618 at 34,798 is my first real key target. You have to flip these on the eight hour as well. And if you can, I'm re realistically looking at the 40,645 for upside. And that will depend heavily on how high that NASDAQ can pump, okay? if it can pump, if it can flip to 200 and 233, that is. But if it does and it moves up, these are our targets that we're looking at, okay? And let's look at our volatility and everything here. As you can see, we're still expanded in the channel. So this translates to me, four hours expanded, eight hours expanded. More than likely, guys, we're gonna be accumulating for a little bit. So I really do appreciate your channel support watching these videos, and I'll do my best to give you as many trades as possible vis-a-vis -vis YouTube, okay? So you can stay entertained and potentially trade as well because I know this can be boring in accumulation, and this is telling me we may be accumulating for at least a little bit longer here before we get our next move, okay? So we'll see how this starts playing out. And let's look at a couple of different things here. Do we have anything we wanna look at? Let's look at the Nubia. This is our VWAP strategy. And as you can see, once again, this is just, you know, your heavy 
your heavy supply line is up here at 42k this is going to keep descending this is why i like this 40k target and then you have your medium supply lines down here to 200 233 all realistic targets guys i try to be really realistic because this is what i do for a living is trade so i try to look at levels that we can actually reach and make money on let's just look at the uh weekly really quickly we had a nice big blue candle that was breaking our nine red candle record breaking streak and it, as you can see we gave a lot of that up but again this will come back when the other markets start to move. They need to move, and if they can flip those 200, 233 long-term moving averages, you will see this market come up some, okay? The veracity of that move will be determined by how high those other markets can pump. And let's just look at Ethereum really quickly as well. I haven't charted this. So let's go ahead and do this. So Ethereum, first thing I'm going to do is this is a four-hour time frame. Why? Because in the descending market, we're going to keep these 200 and 233 always aware of where they're at. This is your selling climax candle. You see how beautiful this is? Selling climax candle, strong demand wick, okay? Now we gotta find our automatic reaction, and we can see the automatic reaction here with the reaction to the selling climax, change of behavior in the candles, volatility, up thrust, failed up thrust, sign of weakness, volatility in the trading range, down thrust in the trading range, and of course you did have your roll up just like Bitcoin and your roll over with Bitcoin, okay? But you are still in your trade range so now what I'm gonna do is throw on some fibs as well to see where we're at this will be a closer fib if I was gonna get more macro targets I'd zoom out to the eight hour or the daily time frame but here on the four hour in your accumulation range let's just see what we get with a wave projection trend based fib we're gonna take the selling climax candle up to your swing high and go down to your swing low one of these down thrust candles and let's just see what we got here so we have the 382 at 1852 0.5 at 1898, the 618 at 1945. And of course, let me zoom in a little bit. You're always looking for confluence. How accurate are the fibs laying out, okay? And if you look at if you look at your 618, for instance, you have multiple rejections here, okay? You got multiple rejections. You can see it being used as support, as support. So I like this fib layout. The one fib at 2094 and anything above that. And keep in mind your 200 and 233 are well above you. So if Bitcoin does get bullish momentum, if the NASDAQ does get bullish momentum you can get some nice price rise here in ethereum now these will be descending and who knows maybe they get down to about the one fib and this will become your impact zone whenever you're looking for points of resistance you always want to look at confluence these just floating up here on this fib these aren't going to be as strong, but when they come down to a key FIB level like the one FIB, a 100% retracement of the move, and price is impacting that at the same time, that is going to be a key point of resistance, and that is something you're going to need to flip to tackle to potentially move up. I think you know the four-hour time frame is just so crucial. You guys know in a couple video, the last few videos, I've showed these big moves you can get, but. In the interim, between now and June 14th, 15th, when the next rate hike comes in, these equity markets can rally, okay? And who knows? They could rally on the day of the rate hike because they whipsaw back and forth, volatility all over the place, but they're holding bullish structures. So I do anticipate a rally, and we got to see how high this rally can take us. But I do have a good picture of some upside for these markets, and I do believe Bitcoin will follow these markets. And remember, guys, always understand the macro environment you are trading in, which which is a bearish market and a descending market, making bullish structures following a bullish uh, structure set up in the NASDAQ, okay? That's the market that we are trading in. And just keep in mind, more economic numbers keep coming out and they're all negative, okay? The Eurozone came out today with inflation, the highest inflation ever since the invention of the Euro for the Eurozone, okay? Germany came out the third biggest economy in the world, 8.5% inflation higher than America. So this is starting to bite all over the world as well as conflict. So keep all of that in your pocket as you consider the market and the market moves. Stay tuned to this channel. Check out the room. Guys, I will keep you updated as best I can. Talk to you tomorrow. I'll answer your comments in the comments section. Thank you again for your support. Talk soon, guys.